Hey there, I'm Ryan Williams. I'm the Director of Technology at SpryFox. Um, I work on a bunch of different things. Um, this is about, um, not about that. Uh, recently, a friend of mine asked me to teach her how to program games. And this seemed like an intriguing proposition to me. It, was, it seemed very thought-provoking. Um, and so I wanted to bring it to you guys, and maybe you guys can help me do something better than I would do on my own. Why would I do such a thing? I am not an expert in game development. I am not a good teacher. I've never done anything like this before. Why, why would I subject myself to this? Well, the selfish reason is that I know that if you teach somebody something, you learn something more about it yourself. You're forced to confront things that you would have thought of, you haven't questioned yet. You're forced to defend yourself. And that's already happened in the process of putting together this curriculum. Um, the other reason is that I think games are important. That's why I'm working on them. And when somebody says that they want to learn about something, it, it, it sort of signals that they also think that that's something important. So I want to reward that. I want, it feels like an opportunity to me to, to, sh to, to, sh to show what I think is so great about games. All right, so how do we actually do this? How do you, how do you teach a class? I don't even know. The, the challenge for me is that we are both busy professionals. We don't have, me and my student, don't have a lot of time. We don't have a lot, we don't see each other that often. We don't, you know, I'm busy at night. So the game, the curriculum requires that a lot of sort of self-exploration, self-motivation, and not a lot of time. I mean, you kind of all crap, no, no nonsense for both me, the teacher, and the student. And so um, I've, I've structured it as a series of half-hour sessions, which will take me about half an hour to prepare for, and then maybe like an hour or two of homework for the student, hoping that'll work out. So the first session is just addressing the question, what is a game? And I'm sure we are all pretty familiar with this, and I don't want to turn this into a philosophy course, so I just want to pick some really straightforward stuff that's like, games are about challenge, interactivity, and they're about that magic circle that you enter when you're playing a game. Um, and then I have some reading that I assign, because, dude, I can assign reading. <laughs> um, so hopefully that'll be a few days of, of, of learning and, and discussion. Um, and then in our next session, we're just gonna jump right into building an actual game. This, uh, that's the point of the whole process. This forced me to make a technology decision, because we have to decide, we have to make our game in something. What I settled on was processing. Processing is, I mean, it, it fits a lot of the constraints of our, uh, of our of our learning process. It's very simple, so it's easy to learn. I mean, I learned it. I, I didn't even learn it. I just wrote it. You know, it was that easy. And there's tons of resources for it online, so you can. So I can just point my student at those resources and she can find out for herself most of the basic stuff. Um, actually, probably some advanced stuff. It might, be, it might be a source of cheating. We'll worry about that later. Okay. The other thing that caught my eye is so this thing called sketchpad.cc, which is basically just an online IEE. It's a web page. There's no installation. Um, it's all saved. So it's, there's no dealing with files. And it's, um, it's based on Etherpad. So there is pair programming built right in. I can check on the progress at any time. You know, it's like really straightforward to create a new project and share projects. It's just like all this bullshit totally gone thanks to Sketchpad. Um, so session two is we're gonna pick a really simple game. I'm probably gonna rip off an indie game and just be like, hey, let's make a very cut down version of that. And um, we'll uh, see how that goes. And then our third session is analysis and iteration. So we're going to look at the different parts and put words on them like, okay, this is the, this is the core mechanic of this game. And this is, this is how the player is rewarded for doing this thing. And this is how you're teaching the player to do this. And maybe there's a story, maybe there's not. Um, probably not, given how given it's going to be like a two-hour game. But um, then we're going to iterate on it. This is the Spry Fox process. Make, it, make a hypothesis. Maybe it would be more fun if the player if the balls in this game were bouncy instead of sticky. Maybe if we added gravity, it would be cool. What if, you know, it's all upside down? And just try those things, because you can iterate on it really quickly, 
we can see very quickly like these changes for this very rudimentary game. And um, the reading is just um, about how to structure your game and about how to come up with new ideas and then boil them down to the best ideas. Um, oh yeah, then, then if the game doesn't have a theme or a story, which it almost certainly won't, what would we do for those? Like, uh, there's all sorts of cool things we could do for that, and that, that would be like a really fun process for us. And I'm expecting that is actually probably going to be a lot more than the session, now that I've said all that. So that's as far as my curriculum has gotten. It's, it seems like a lot of, it seems like not that much, it's only three sessions, but at the same time, how is it going to go? I don't, I have no idea. I haven't tested it, I don't know how this is going to work out. So it could be after session one, we totally go off somewhere else, and I go over playing sessions two and three. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is that while I was designing this, it, there's a lot of parallels between this, this sort of design work, and the design work you do while you're designing a game. There's, you're trying to keep the person engaged, you're trying to make sure that their challenges are just above their level of current ability, you're trying to make sure that they're refreshing their old skills on a regular schedule, and you want there to be a sense of exploration, because you learn things better if you discover it yourself. So, lots of parallels there. Hopefully I'll become a better game designer because of it. And I'll tell you guys about it. So. Is the person you're working with uh, already a programmer, or is that part of the process as well? The person is already an engineer. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I can kind of skip the programming stuff. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.